All righty. So what are you going to find out? What are common goods or common resources and public goods? You will need to give examples of these. Uh, why do markets not give us enough public goods and common resources? And what actions can the government take to get us to a place where we have enough or closer to enough public goods and common resources? Okay. There are a lot of goods that you consume without paying. You go to the park. You are protected by our Army and Air Force, Navy, Marines, who just had their 239th birthday on Monday. Um, you breathe clean air. You drink clean water. When those goods have no prices, market forces that would normally allocate resources to them if they had a price, those market forces are absent, which means that there are inadequate resources being allocated to those <coughs> goods. So the private market fails to give us enough resources to provide the goods that we want because we're not paying for those goods. So this takes us back to the government can sometimes improve market outcomes. And this is particularly relevant when we talk about public goods. Now, there are specific ways to tell if something that you're looking at is, in fact, a public good. There's a good matrix that your book gives you to uh, weigh out whether or not it's a public good. Is the good excludable? Meaning, can I prevent someone from using it? The pits here at school. Can I prevent someone from using those pits? I could theoretically put up a fence and charge admission. But as they stand now, can I prevent someone from using the pits? So, so far, the pits look like they're a public good. Things that are excludable. Fish tacos. I don't have to give you one. Wireless internet access. I can put a password on it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Things that aren't excludable. FM radio. If you have a receiver, you can get the radio signal. Uh, national defense. If you choose not to pay your federal taxes, the Army does not come and erect a bullseye on the roof of your house. It does not put a billboard in your front yard that says terrorists blow up here. Okay? It's not excludable. You get that protection whether you've paid for it or not. Okay? A public good must also not be rival in consumption. If a good is rival in consumption, the fact that you are using it diminishes my ability to use it. An example fish tacos. If I am eating a fish taco, you cannot also eat that fish taco. Okay? Not Rival. An MP3 of Kanye's we Kanye West's latest single. If I am playing that MP3, as long as I don't have headphones on, I can listen to it and so can you. And the fact that you are also listening to it does not diminish my ability to listen to it. Okay? It's not like you suck a certain amount of decibels out of the air with your ears. Okay? So, private goods are both excludable and rival in consumption. In order for it to be a private good, you have to be able to prevent others from using it, and their use of it has to diminish your use of it. Prime example of a private good, food. Public goods are not excludable and do not rival in consumption. I can go to Yosemite and enjoy the view of Half Dome, and it doesn't make it less enjoyable for me if you are also there. 
theoretically, as long as you shut your mouth. Okay. I am still able to see the view of Half Dome. Okay. National defense. Just because Sherman is also being protected from terrorists doesn't mean that I am less protected from terrorists. We are we're equally protected. Okay. A great example of public good is the TSA when you go through the airport. They are protecting us all by scanning us and patting us down. Okay. In fact, if they didn't, it would be rival in consumption. Their failure to pat Max down might inhibit my safety on that airplane. Okay. Common resources are rival, but not excludable. Common resources are goods that are rival or our resources that are rival, but not excludable. Fish in the ocean. I can't prevent you from taking your fishing trawler out there and netting some fish. And yet, every fish you catch is a fish that I can't catch. So that makes them rival but not excludable. It's just too big of an ocean. I can't put up a fence around the ocean. This is to some extent what uh, the folks who want to build the fence along our southern border are figuring out about the American dream. It's not exactly excludable. Building a fence along that much distance is a little difficult. Okay. Final definition, club goods. Club goods are excludable, but not rival. You can keep people out, but if you were to let them in, it wouldn't necessarily hurt your consumption. Prime example, cable TV. I am able to go home and enjoy my cable TV despite the fact that KK is also enjoying her cable TV. Now, because Laura won't pay for cable TV, she is excluded. But KK consuming it doesn't hurt my consumption of it. Follow? <laughs> uh, Oh, we'll get to password sharing. That would be Netflix, babe, not cable TV. Um, There's no password for it. Richard uses somebody's password to get stuff. Okay. Categorizing roads. Which one of those four kinds of goods is a road? Uh, is it a public good? Zach says a road is a public good. Oh, yeah. Kyle says a road is a common resource. The answer is it depends. Ooh. Okay. It is an answer. It depends on whether or not the road is congested or whether or not it's a toll road. Why do you need your backpack to get your picture taken? Wow. All right. So, if it's an uncon... Whoop. It's only rival in consumption if the road is congested. If putting one more car on there makes it even more congested, it's difficult for me to use it efficiently. It's only excludable if it's a toll road. Ethan is being stricken by FCS again. Ethan, the top of your head is beautiful. You know, the, did you guys ever see that? That uh, mad TV thing, the back of your head is ridiculous. Yeah. The top of your head is ridiculous, but it also makes it very evident that you have fascinating crotch syndrome. That's FCA. Uh, no. All right. So if we have put a gate up and said you can only drive on this road if you pay a fee, it is a toll road. 
So there's four possible answers to this question because it depends. If it's an uncongested non-toll road, it is a public good. 84th Street right now, public good. 84th Street at midnight, public good. Everybody, anybody ever been down to Texas? Lots of toll roads. How about Kansas? The Kansas Turnpike? The Kansas Turnpike is in general a great example of an uncongested toll road. And it is a club good. I get to pay and I get to drive like lightning. Yes, sir. Um, ish. Ish. A carpool lane isn't is yes kind of except you're not paying a toll you just have to meet a requirement but the the book gives you great example one of the insets at the bottom of the page tells you a fantastic story about that yes um the cops just have to pull you over if you don't have enough people in your car what uh generally it's three um people will get blow up dolls and then there's a bigger fine so, okay. we don't need them. Okay, if you have a congested non-toll road, 84th Street at 745, it's a common resource. Uh, I-80 at 445, 5515. Kyle has fascinating desk syndrome. Okay. And a congested toll road would be a private good. Because you paying to put your car on this road is slowing me down. That's rival in consumption and it's excludable. Okay? So those are the tests you have to apply. Trust me, you will need to do that on the quiz. All right. So public goods and common resources. For either a public good or a common resources, there are externalities, okay? There's externalities specifically because there's no price. Okay. So the private decisions that we make about consuming public goods and common resources and production of public goods using common resources can have very inefficient outcomes like astoundingly inefficient outcomes, okay? Public policy to govern and kind of regulate those outcomes and help the decisions be more efficient can have very positive impacts on our economic well-being. Okay. Public goods are generally not produced by private markets because of the free rider problem. Okay. Public goods are generally not produced by private markets because of the free rider problem. A free rider is a person who gets the benefit of a good but doesn't pay for it. This is, this is Kyle not paying for national defense and yet not being bombed. He's a free rider. He gets the benefit of all of that national defense without paying his taxes. A free rider is all of the people you've given your Netflix password to. A free rider is anybody who pulls up in the parking lot outside of a Starbucks and accesses the free Wi-Fi without going in and buying coffee. Or how many of you have ever done this when you're on a car trip? and you go past the public rest stop and pull into the McDonald's and don't buy anything but use the nice clean bathrooms. Free riders. Free riders. Okay. If, if a good is not excludable, you are actually incentivized to be a free rider. The system is encouraging you not to pay for it if you can't be excluded from it. Okay. 
because there's no way the firm can prevent you from not paying for the good. Would people appreciate the Wi-Fi at Starbucks if they had to get a code on the bottom of their receipt after they'd paid for their coffee that they had then had to enter to access the Wi-Fi? I think by it one faster and keep that receipt forever. It'd be faster. It's not as many people as you want. The Wi-Fi would be faster because there wouldn't be so many people on it. Actually, wireless internet is kind of rival in consumption because there's a limited bandwidth. It's sort of like your family plan cell phones. Those are rival in consumption. Your little sister who likes to download My Little Pony videos is rivaling in your consumption and consuming your bandwidth. Okay. All right. The result that happens, guys, with a public good is that the private market doesn't produce it because it can't limit the free rider problem. Why should I do this? Why does Starbucks provide, Starbucks provide free internet? So you'll go there. The longer you stay there, the more likely you are to drink more. And it costs them a set amount to provide that free internet Oh, believe me, there's significant markup on that caramel macchiato pumpkin spice latte. Okay. So, even if the buyers collectively value the good higher than the cost of providing it, if free riders can't be prevented, the private market won't put it out there. So, here's how you figure out if the government should provide it. If the benefit exceeds the cost of providing it, the government should provide the good and pay for it with a tax on the people who benefit from it. If the benefit of the good exceeds the cost of providing it, the government should provide it and tax the people who benefit from it. Simple answer to should this be a public good. The problem is that measuring the benefit is difficult. Okay. So in order to do that, the government performs what's known as a cost-benefit analysis. What is the cost? What is the benefit? Analyze. Okay. Cost-benefit analysis. This is important. If you go into business, you will find yourself performing cost-benefit analysis all the time. Should we hire another person? Should we stay open another hour? Should we open on Thanksgiving night or wait until 3 in the morning on Black Friday? Okay. Cost benefit analysis all the time. But here we're talking about it in terms of public goods. Okay. <clears throat> They're fairly imprecise because measuring the benefit is difficult and predictive. Unless it's been done before somewhere else, and even then the circumstances might be somewhat different, you're having to tell the future. So get your crystal ball out. Yeah. Okay, some really important public goods that are out there. National defense, huge. If we did not have national defense, it, we would be hugely vulnerable. Would you, w name a nation for me that you are aware of that doesn't have very good national defense. Switzerland. Uh, Finland. 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 Well, how does Finland, okay, that's a great one. How does Finland get away with not having a military? They don't get involved in anything. Huh? It's not actually all. Well, it is kind of small, no but one cares about like yeah. What does Finland have that anybody else wants? They Oil. Nothing. Nothing. Ice. Ice. No. They have some natural resources. They have some mineral wealth and some oil wealth, but not enough to make it worth it. And what else do they have? A whole lot of cold, a whole lot of dark, a whole lot of forest. Okay. So you have to be desirable to be vulnerable. 
Okay? Or, or something that a bunch of you have said is they don't stick their nose in anything. Okay? What natural resources does Israel have? It has a religious debate. Desert and religious sites. A really salty sea. Yeah. Lots of sand, lots of rock, lots of archaeological and religious historical sites. It does have ports, but so do nations right next to it. So why does Israel have arguably the best national defense on the planet? Because they are vulnerable for other reasons. Yeah. Why are you on Twitter right now? You should upload a video. Yeah, I recorded my lecture for World Civ. Why are you on Twitter right now? I don't know. Ah, thank you. No, Boom. You tweet it. Twitter, public good. It's excludable. You don't have to sign up for it. Yeah, it's a common resource. Okay. Now, um, oh, I was I was still talking about national defense. Um, so, if we didn't have a strong national defense, and you were looking to build a new factory, would you build it in one of our port cities? No. Mm, why not? Because it could be vulnerable, it could be destroyed. Um, let's see, I think we've talked about this before. Uh, Tony, you're the next great um, entrepreneur, and you're looking for a place to build um, your corporate headquarters. And I hear that there's some land available just outside Damascus, Syria, cheap. And there's a lot of unemployed people there who would make a great labor force. Are you interested? It doesn't matter. You make widgets. I'm not, I'm not going to build in Syria. You, why are you not going to build right outside Damascus, Syria? There's a lot of problems in that area. There's a lot of problems. Like what? Nuclear. Um, yeah, ISIS. I, I, ISIS, civil war, yeah, civil bombs, war. gassing. Okay. So the lack of presence of national defense also is impacting Syria's economy, isn't it? Because they're not able to... Uh, recruit international investors. Tony doesn't want to just flush his money. Oh, they could give him the land for free and offer to build the building for free. Tony, are you moving your family to Damascus? For free? I could spend money on for my own factory. There's no way business wise that you would do that. All right, another huge public good, knowledge created through basic research. Boys and girls, this is like Wikipedia. You can access it. You accessing it doesn't keep me from accessing it. Okay. Uh, cancer research. If I discover the cure for cancer, actually, I did discover the cure for cancer. Now, now, does that become a public good? What, what kinds of research do become a public good? Um, books aren't necessarily a public good until their copyright has expired. Vaccinations are not a public good because producing that vaccine actually costs money. How about things like the Pythagorean theorem? That's definitively a public good. Uh, the theory of relativity? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you understand it or not, it's there for you to use. Okay. Terminal velocity? Public good. All right. The fight against poverty is actually a public good. The fight against poverty is actually a public good. Why? It doesn't hurt me to have other people helping the poor. 
And if other people are helping the poor, it actually helps me indirectly by making them productive parts of our economy. Okay. And no one can exclude them from the help. All right. So common resources like public goods are not excludable. Which means that we can't prevent free riders from using them. The fact that we can't prevent free riders from using them means that private firms are probably not going to provide them. Why? Okay. They don't make a profit. It costs money for maintenance and upkeep. Okay. So then the role of government is to see that they're provided. Okay. There's another problem with common resources, that they rival in consumption. The pits at 7.49 in the morning before the bell rings and the doors open to let you into the halls. A little crowded? You ever walk by the pits at 8.04? A little trashed? Anybody seen the carpet in the pits lately? I don't know why people want to sit on that carpet. It is gross. And it is torn up. It is a mess. Okay? These are problems with public goods is because they are provided by the government, it's government's responsibility to maintain them. People see it as not my problem. That's why our hallways are full of trash. That's somebody else's job. Somebody will clean it up after me. How many of you live in an apartment? Nobody lives in an apartment? Okay. All right. So when you lived in the apartment, um, how did the cleanliness of your apartment compare to the cleanliness of the hallways and stairways? Oh, a condo, not an apartment. Okay. Okay. How does the cleanliness of your apartment compare to the cleanliness of the stairways and hallways? The hallways are trashed. That's generally the circumstance if the building is more than a few months old. Why? Because it's not mine. It's not my problem. I'll take care of my stuff but not yours. This is why people litter on the highway. The same person who driving down the highway would happily throw a cup out the window would not pull into their own driveway and throw a cup out on their yard. Right? <laughs> common resources. Okay. Each person's use of a common resource reduces another person's ability to use it. And so the role for the government in common resources is to make sure that they aren't overused. If you go to Yellowstone National Park, common resource, but it can become overcrowded. And so the government regulates the number of day hike permits. It regulates the number of overnight camping permits. It regulates the number of camping sites. Ethan, apparently you have spread your fascinating crotch syndrome to Laura. She's suffering from FCS as well now. Maybe you guys can have a support group. Okay. I feel like they want to be a good support group. <laughs> okay. The tragedy of the commons. Okay, this is a parable. Ooh, tell us a story, Mrs. Hogue. You want to come up for story time, boys and girls? Okay. All right. The tragedy of commons illustrates for us why common resources get overused, okay? So once upon a time in a medieval European town, there is a town common. It's a green area in the center of town, and everybody uses it to graze their sheep, okay? And it's fine. It's good. The sheep grow. They uh, harvest the wool, the village is prosperous, everyone is living well. Because everyone is living well, the population grows. And so more people need to be supported, and so more sheep are brought to graze on the common. Now, the common doesn't get bigger as we put more sheep on it. And so the grass begins to get overgrazed. It can't recover. It doesn't grow back. And what happens? 
Our sheep are hungry and they begin to die. We can't graze enough sheep. And so people have to leave town because we can't support ourselves on the wool industry of our village anymore. The commons has become overused and this is a tragedy. This is the tragedy of the commons, KK. Okay, lamb, sell the lamb chops. Except you can shear a sheep many times, but you can only have lamb chops once. Okay, so the private incentive of using the land for free outweighed the social incentive of using it carefully. Okay, the result of the tragedy of the commons is no more bad. I don't know how the people in this village will fall asleep now. Ah! All right. Okay. The tragedy of the commons is due to an externality, guys. Allowing uh, Treston's flock to graze on the commons diminishes the quality of the grass available for Chrishell's sheep to graze on the commons. Okay. So if they are both allowing their sheep herds to graze on the commons, both herds are being negatively impacted. What happens is they both ignore that negative external cost and both overuse the commons. Okay? Because that externality is not being what's the word we have to use to fix into externalities? It's not being internalized. Oh yeah. Okay, they're not internalizing it because they're not having to pay for it. They're going to internalize it pretty soon when the sheep die. Okay, all right, application. What could be done to prevent the tragedy of the commons? Give permits. Give permits for sheep grazing. Limit the number of sheep. Get some sod. That's not a solution. Expand the commons? Doesn't that just delay the problem? Yeah, because they're still just going to keep up more sheep. Yeah, expand the commons, I'll just get more sheep. Connor? Feed the sheep something else? Well, no, like instead of having a place for the sheep, just make it like grow grass one year and just keep on throwing hay and then feed the sheep one year. Build a new house. And then they can graze in the next year. But once you plant hay, then you'd have to replant grass, and that takes a year to grow. And what do you do with the sheep in between? You're talking about a, an entirely different. Uh, you're a uh, different. You're talking about an entirely different economic problem, which is the failure to diversify their economy and relying upon solely one resource. This is like the South and the boll weevil in the cotton. It's a different issue. No, 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 no. Get, get away from alfalfa and diversifying the crops. Fix the tragedy of the commons. We said limit the number of sheep. Sell permits to graze your sheep. You guys are missing a really obvious one. Limit the time. No, not fertilizer. Tax them. How is that different than selling permits? It creates revenue to use to buy more land. <laughs> How about a fence? How about a fence and a gatekeeper? Uh huh. You need to make it excludable for sure, right? All right. Impose a corrective tax on the use of the land to internalize the externality. Tax them. Regulate the use of the land. This is the gatekeeper at the fence. Okay. Auction off permits allowing the use of the land. Or. Eliminate the commons altogether. Divide it up, sell it off. And if you choose to overgraze your own little chunk of the land, boohoo for you. Okay? These are your possible government interventions to eliminate the tragedy of the commons. All right. So, Getting away from the tragedy of the commons, these are the flat out public policy steps that can be taken to eliminate the overconsumption of common resources. You can regulate the use of the resource. 
You can impose a corrective tax, which forces the externality to be internalized. Feel my pain is what a corrective tax does. Okay? Hunting and fishing licenses. The fact that you can only kill a certain number of deer, a certain number of geese, a certain number of ducks. Okay? Uh, entrance fees for those national parks, which are particularly congested. Yellowstone, Yosemite, Grand Canyon. Auction off permits allowing the use of the resource. Um, the FCC, you have to pay for a license to use a specific little spectrum of the airwaves. Um, we have walkie-talkies in broadcasting, and we have to have an FCC license to use the bandwidth that we communicate on. Okay. Yes, because then you're a free rider and you're congesting and you're um, inhibiting their use. Okay, if the resource is land, you can, can convert it to a private good and sell it off in parcels. Okay. Um, a good example of externalities in a public good would be um, those the zebra mussels that we've been hearing about in the public lakes and stuff. When someone takes their boat to a place where zebra mussels are, they're a little parasite, and they get on the boat, and then you take it to a place like Lake Zerinsky and put your boat in, and then the whole lake is ruined for everybody because you brought zebra mussels. They cut you really bad. They're worse than coral in some ways. Yeah. Okay. Common resources that are important to us. Clean air and water. Mildly important, right? Actually so important that what did President Obama announce, announce yesterday after talking with the Chinese? that the U.S. and China have finally reached an agreement to cut carbon emissions. Even the Chinese have begun to value clean air and water. Congested roads. We talked about the costs of commuting. Fish, whales, other wildlife. Okay. Case study. Spam. There are certain businesses that use spam emails uh, to advertise their products. I get a fair number of these here at school all of the time, offering me um, certain enhancements for body parts I may or may not have, offering me loan refinances, um, all sorts of stuff. Okay? Firms can't be prevented from spamming. They can send the spam. The more people who send spam, the less effective it becomes because the recipients of the spam find ways to defend against it. Spam filters, firewall software, et cetera, et cetera. And so now I hardly ever see that. I just go to my spam fol folder and I type in a few words that somebody who actually meant to send me something would have and I go through a few names. Not there, I delete the whole folder. I don't even have to deal with their spam because it's become so rival and less effective. So spam then becomes a common resource. And what do we know about common resources? They get overused. So think of spam as your ideal common resource for an example why it gets overused. It's free to use, can't exclude it, but it's rival in consumption. All right. Public goods are underprovided, common resources are overconsumed. When property rights aren't well established, we get problems. Nobody owns the air, just like nobody owns the stairway in the apartment building, and so it gets polluted. But the person who owns that stairway in the apartment building isn't living there, isn't living in the stairway. It's common. Okay? Like I said, you own your lawn, which is why you don't pull into your driveway and just throw the trash out of your car. But you don't own the shoulder on the highway, which is why people just throw the trash out of their car. Okay. Nobody can charge the people who benefit from national defense. They just get to free ride it. If we tried to charge by head, we would end up with not enough national defense. Have any of you ever had to call 911? Okay. Can I ask why, Max? Uh, uh, we got stranded on the shore of a lake because there's a big storm. Okay. 
What lake? It was Lake Dillon in Colorado. Lake Dillon in Colorado. Do you pay taxes in Colorado, Max? No, I do not. You do not. And yet you dialed 911, a public service provided in Colorado, and did they come? Yeah. They came. He was a free rider in Colorado, and yet they came because they don't exclude. And guys, that was the whole lecture. End of chapter problems for tomorrow.